Hey, welcome back to the channel where we talk about landscape and design in itself. Uh, generally, I do something which is I put some drone footage to show you some of the projects I've worked on or something that's captured my attention and I want to do a breakdown. Now, this time around, I'm doing something a little different and essentially what I'm doing is just showing you how I would start a design in my thoughts as I'm doing those. So kind of stick around uh, if you want to and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second and you'll kind of see uh, the design process itself kind of in this general area. But one of the things I like to do first is go on site and kind of see what I'm working with. Now this is specific one, um, I just grab a plot plan from somewhere in the internet. So I don't know where this is from and it doesn't really matter at this point in time for the purposes this is going to be more of a just giving you guys some ideas as to what my process would be if this were to be a project of mine or I'm helping somebody else to kind of give them ideas to what to do with uh, say their new home or maybe their this is their home but they want to completely renovate everything outside because they just don't like it for whatever reason. That being said, let's put that on the side and kind of start. Now, one of the things that I think is very important, at least for me it is, is to go on site kind of see what I'm working with, uh, kind of know where uh, we're going to have some of the wind patterns, uh, where the water is going to drain um, the elevation compared from the house to kind of the surrounding, immediate surrounding of the lot itself. Uh, where the sun is going to be for the most part, the shady areas of the house, uh, maybe an area where you want to utilize the most for say another patio or water future or something within those ideas. So that's generally what I to do. But in this case, I'm imagining that I am somewhere in Dallas, let's say Fort Worth, Texas. Yes, why not? Now, one of the things I do know about the area is that one, it has a good amount of water, uh, humidity, and it's somewhat flat. Um, at the same time, because it is uh, humid, um, it allows to grow a lot of grass. Now, I definitely like grass like many people. I just don't like it too close to my house. Now, that's just my personal preference. If you are of the kind of person that just likes it right next to the foundation, it's up to you. But in my case, I don't like it so much. I like to mix it up a bit. Now, I'm not saying that we should have completely, you know, just a huge uh, area where there's nothing as in no grass, but you know, just give an idea that I like to keep it a bit clean just right around the house. So with that being said, as I'm doing this design, I'm kind of looking as to where I would want grass. And for the most part though, the good uh, majority of the lot is going to have some grass. In fact, a lot of grass around the house because I'm imagining this again being in Texas. So once I kind of do that, I do my outline around the house. I give it a bit of uh, space between four feet and about eight feet or so in some areas where I want to put some shrubs and some trees and a few other things that would mean that that area would be where I would want to put some uh, some rock mulch uh, kind of right next to the house and maybe also some wood mulch but kind of what I want to do right now is kind of do have a bit of that uh, gap or space in between the sod and the actual house uh, this would give me a good place to put some shrubs. Now, um, we're gonna talk about this in just a bit as to what I would want for this design, but let's kind of continue on as to what I'm working with here. Uh, so I'm thinking that uh, in the backyard, I like to have a patio, kind of a detached patio away from the house and kind of have uh, where you have this sort of uh, uh, covering, uh, uh, maybe add some concrete just to kind of make that a little bigger in case you have family and then a separate patio maybe a paver patio where even more uh, kind of away from the house even though it's not a lot it's enough to kind of detach it from the house where you can sort of sit down kind of have some some more uh, chairs uh, there to kind of have uh, maybe say uh, some friends over but that's a little bit of the ideas that I'm working with at least that I'm thinking about when I'm doing this one now I kind of have all this and I'm thinking all right so if I have this uh, what should I use uh, for say my shrubs and or trees now 
there is a huge selection that you can pick as far as what you want to do as far as trees and i'm thinking maybe something that's uh, common in the area maybe some uh ball cypresses uh maybe next to where you have that paper patio three of them why not uh maybe among my trees uh maybe some maples maybe like a red maple uh and also a japanese maple something a little smaller kind of next to say the house in between the house and the patio itself where it's gonna stay sort of small and uh kind of stay and have like that little extra interest that you can uh give to that area as well maybe right below it have some uh cast iron plants something that's not so big but kind of has that sort of green look it's almost like a big blade grass you know, I'll put a picture kind of in this area below somewhere, but to give you the idea that there's going to be some contrast. So you have the, the Japanese maple being one small, but kind of having that sort of red color of the leaves versus the cast iron where it's more green, but like kind of broad leaves that will give a really, really good kind of contrast and difference of colors. Now, there's obviously many things you can do, but you know, this is my design. So at least this is what I like to do with what I have here now this is one of many shrubs that i would like to use uh for the area maybe in areas that are going to be a bit say a bigger more space kind of i mentioned there's going to be in areas where they could be somewhere between four feet and eight feet so in the bigger areas and this is going to depend so uh, say like an althea um, now that was going to be a little bigger between 8 and 12 feet uh, tall and about 4 to 10 give or take um, as far as how wide it's going to get but that was going to need a bit more sun so maybe I can put that one closer to the garage area itself just where it's gonna have a good area. And one cool thing of those is that you can have uh, maybe some whites, pinks, and or purples if you like those as an as idea to what you can do. Now, this is just one of the ones that I'm thinking. All right, so let's have some more uh, flowers. You know, might as well, since it's uh, in the area where it does allow it. So some azaleas would also be great. Now, those are gonna be um, a little smaller um between two and eight feet so not i mean obviously not super tiny or anything but spreading is going to be about three to eight again uh bigger spaces uh, are going to give you more of that red flowers again very pretty stuff that you can also use uh um let's see another thing maybe a boxwood now boxwoods are very common uh in areas where there's a lot of water and you can even use it as a hedge if you wanted to you can give it that super nice clean look like a boxy what? Yep, round it, however you prefer. Maybe have some of those. Uh, those are evergreens. Uh, so you can kind of put those maybe next to the house again. Maybe even like a nice row of them if you wanted to. Again, within the idea that I want, maybe have some of those in certain areas. Now, another one I like to do is a barberry. Now, barberries are thorny, so I will have to say that right now. Uh, some people like them, especially if. Uh, potentially want to keep something away from the area maybe be kids or pets probably works better on people i would say now i'm not saying that you should do it if you want to be mean i'm not saying it for the reason one the plant itself is very 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 pretty but at the same time um because of the thorns you know it does hurt um now i would assume that uh if kids are smart and they are they are probably going to stay away from them uh but what i am saying is that this will add color it has some of those sort of darker red colors that will give you a really nice thing to look at now some people don't like them because yes over time you are going to have to prune them so when you're doing that again you have to cut them so you have to pick everything up and yep there are storms so some people would like them some people don't so kind of keep that in mind but in my design i'm like yeah let's put some of those why not i'm not gonna really mess with them because it's just an imaginary design at least in this case now another thing i like to do if i were to do something like this keep in mind that those guys are sort of small and there's different kinds but the ones i'm thinking about right now is going to be only about maybe three feet tall so not not very big but maybe if i were to have something like that maybe i can have a bit of contrast with some forsythias something that's going to give us a, this sort of 
rich yellow orange color of flower oh very very pretty stuff now this one's going to be way bigger than the um, barberries it kind of goes between five to seven feet and about six uh high so definitely bigger definitely bigger uh but it would allow you to kind of have different colors you know to kind of mix them up not just have only one is just green right green and red great yes and then maybe add some yellow as well and this is kind of the one that i would like um some people don't like them because uh depending on where you are and i would probably say that in the area of uh, texas at least in this imaginary spot that i just randomly chose um it's going to have enough moisture for it to be pretty full, but some areas where it doesn't have enough water, uh, because of that, it just won't look as full. And some people just don't like that, like it doesn't look super full. You know, like it looks more like twigs, and you know, it's not as appealing, but I definitely like them. Now, another thing I like to do, maybe in this case, is add some viburnums, some uh, snowballs. And yes, as the word says, it looks like a snowball from this plant. And if you haven't seen them, again, I'm gonna put a picture somewhere in this area. Um, it's not super big, but it is still quite big, four to eight feet and about six to eight tall. So you will still need a good amount of space to put them. So in my imaginary uh, settings, I will kind of put it around the house where you have of more space uh, to kind of have them there. But again, this is just what I'm thinking uh, for, for, for me. Uh, another thing that probably would want to uh, mix it up is or add not necessarily mix it up but just add a bit of that color um some wax myrtle and um this as opposed to the other ones that have been mentioned so far um it's gonna be more of a leaves but i think it looks great um it's gonna be a little big similar to the other ones uh, uh 36 feet uh, height and four to eight wide like anything else when we say this numbers it kind of means just as how big they're going to get but you definitely want to prune them you know it's that maintenance uh, maintenance is really the key to having a beautiful yard yes you are going to invest all this time uh, to find the the correct say trees uh, shrubs perennials and everything else but the maintenance is what is going to keep it going for the years to come so again i'm just giving you some ideas as to what you could do and adding to this also a hydrangea again another beautiful plant that you can also use uh, that would grow really well in the area um, three to, uh, three feet wide by five uh, high so not super big it's more on the media size of things uh, where you can also put them but um, this is our some of the ideas that I would want to do with this one now as far as a patio I think I said pavers you could do pavers but in this um, imaginary uh, design of mine it definitely would have pavers uh, an area of uh, 18 across uh, and because uh, it's pretty warm and generally not very cold I probably wouldn't want to add a fire pit at least not in this design um, I know that last year there was a big storm and that's something that doesn't happen often um, I'm used to the area of the mountains where it gets pretty cold uh, below 30 degrees on you know a good amount of the winter time and it can go below zeros. Uh, this area of where I'm imagining, no, not as much. So for that reason, I'm like, yep, yes, I have a fire pit because generally it's pretty warm. So you probably don't need that, but you probably would want some more space to have more friends over. Um, and the reason why I mentioned the trees, uh, the cypresses is to have a bit more of screening. Now on the opposite side, you kind of see you know, like a little bit of like a sort of island going on there. I think it may be like a maple, maybe like a red maple, uh, potentially, it may be on the other side, something either similar to that, or maybe even like, uh, I don't know, uh, a crab apple, uh, something that's gonna have like a early blooming, uh, you know, maybe like a white or maybe like a pink one. But, you know, just give you some ideas. And I also put uh, some maybe more uh, evergreens. And there's plenty of those to go around with those. If, uh, if you don't uh, say, well, maybe I already have a lot of the broad everlings, maybe do like some like a mugo pine where it's still gonna be an evergreen, but a little different needles more or less versus uh you know a leaf in itself but this is a design that i just want to do i kind of want to talk to you guys about um if you guys like any of this let me know in the comments um if you guys want me to kind of put even more details like 
you know, what's the distance, you know, between say the sidewalk and the house and how much, uh, you know, what is the area that you are, you know, maybe thinking about, you know, for say the patio. I'd to hear your thoughts. I'll, I'll do some of those videos as well. If this is your first time, uh, one of the things that I want to do is give you guys ideas so you guys can use those for your future project, uh, be it the front, the back, the sides, you know, your landscape in itself. Uh, the idea is that uh, when you have a plan to, to actually execute, you are going to go with it as opposed to grabbing things and just throwing them in and hoping, you know, just crossing your fingers that magic happens and generally that doesn't happen so it's better to come up with a plan and go with that one anyways those are my ideas for this uh this video i'd like to hear your thoughts put them in the comments let me know what you're thinking if you are doing your own landscape and you want to maybe uh take some pictures and tag me on instagram i am there at landscape allure um i'll you know put right there the, the hashtag where you guys can find me that'd be great and you guys already know our motto which is uh dream design create uh, thumbs if you like it subs if you loved it and we will see you guys on our next video take care bye